Not long ago, Adams County libraries were considered the worst library system in the state and they were the least funded in the state for more than 50 years. But recently, they were awarded the National Medal for Museum and Library Service in Washington, D.C. We'll learn about this amazing transformation and about exciting innovations happening in libraries all around the area on this edition of Metro Voices. Hi, I'm Wendy Brockman. Public libraries have been an essential part of the great American dream since early colonial times. Ben Franklin started a library in 1731, pooling the resources of his friends to buy books they could all share. But the high-tech, state-of-the-art libraries of today are about so much more than books. They can actually change lives. Let's start by taking a look at the Jefferson County Public Library and how it's making a real difference in the communities it serves. Do libraries change lives? At Jefferson County Public Library, we say yes. We're not about books or buildings, we're about people and about helping them become the best that they can be. At JCPL, we see personal transformations happen every day. There's an energy in libraries. When you walk in the door, you just see this energy of people being satisfied. Welcome to Jefferson County Public Library. JCPL comprises 10 libraries stretching from Arvada to Littleton, from Edgewater to Evergreen. It's true we house books and other resources, but we're really giving people the tools they need to become better readers, better learners, better workers, and better citizens. We help them become the best they can be. The exceptional thing about public libraries is that they make resources available to anyone, regardless of ethnic background, economic status, political affiliation, or any other demographic. I absolutely love the connections that this library makes with the community, that each staff member makes with every individual who comes into the library. JCPL works hard to give children a solid start in early literacy and to support their academic achievement. I look at our libraries as something that helps us support our children from the time of preschool clear through graduation and even after graduation. So libraries are just hand in hand with learning. Story time! Good morning and welcome to Storytime at Columbine. For kids, I think it's one of the few places left in the community that's safe and a place that's free that they can come and just feel accepted and play. Well, it's time to say hello to our friends. When you see a baby or toddler story time going on, you may think it's all fun and games. But these are programs with teeth based on a program used nationally to promote early literacy. We're giving them an experience that is pure entertainment, uh, but those little brains are absorbing a lot of information that they're going to need later. We also have story time on wheels and in Spanish. The Traveling Children's Library visited more than 70 preschool and Head Start classrooms last year for more than 1,400 low-income and at-risk children. The children that we're targeting are children who um, may not otherwise have access to the library, may not have very many books at home, and so we bring the library and we bring those books right there to their school. Does a dinosaur roar? The teachers universally said that they could see evidence of the children's increased early literacy skills as, as a result of the Traveling Children's Library program. It just makes a, a, a massive difference in the lives of these children. It's a gift that keeps on giving. It might be silly to say, but the more a child can, can experience that gift of a book, it's, it's a lifelong gift. At JCPL, we want to ensure that every citizen can take part in the information economy. You guys are in Internet Basics with me today. We have state-of-the-art technology with nearly 300 public access computers and classes to help people learn how to use these resources. It was just amazing what technology will allow us to do, and we're trying to make sure that everyone has that access to technology so that they can compete 
or participate in the world that's occurring around them. The online library gives you instant mobile access to global information 24 hours a day and resources to help you research topics of interest, find scholarships, enhance your resume, or train for a new career. We have more than 80 online databases available to anyone with a library card. They're getting help. You know, they're getting help to get the food stamps. They're getting help to find out how to apply for that job online. Esther Roybal is an inspiring example. She doesn't own a computer. Laid off from her job as an administrative assistant, she visits the Stanley Lake Library every day to look for work. It's frustrating, it's depressing. I've had to be on unemployment, which I've never had to do in my life. I click on all the jobs and read the job definition, and if I feel that I'm a good match for the job, I go ahead and apply. In the meantime, she's figured out how to put her growing computer skills to use. By accessing some of the library's databases on computer graphics, she's now helping small business owners in Arvada with advertising. Heather, for example, moved here from Vietnam and doesn't really know how to use a computer. Well, she needed a holiday flyer, and I told her, you know what, I'll do that, because that gives me a chance to expand my skills and keep them current and help her. She's, you know, here to face the American dream, to achieve it, and I'm happy to help her, you know, because I believe in America and I believe in that dream. Our libraries also support the economic development of our citizens and communities. I do believe that without a library, Without a strong library in our community, we, we would suffer as a community. Samuel Padilla would agree with that. He owns a window washing company, but business is slow in the winter. So he found a way to keep the paychecks coming. I got hired by Home Depot and Target. He landed two jobs quickly, thanks to the online resources at the library in Golden. If I didn't have that library there, I would have to pay to go use a computer. Libraries give people the tools they need to climb out of poverty and to achieve financial security. And that, I believe, helps to stabilize our communities. Good schools, good libraries, good arts, good business, it enriches the community and it enhances property values. Libraries play a role in all of that and if they didn't exist, I think we would lose something that is the great equalizer. And the longer you work in the library, the more life-changing stories you hear. Patricia Correa remembers two men from the then Soviet Georgia who immigrated to Arvada and started a mail order business. They were so giddy. They just were beside themselves. Everything they learned about how to start and run a business, they learned at the Arvada Library. That morning, they signed a huge contract and came in to say thank you. And the conversation ended with one of them telling me that now they were going to be able to get married. Now they were going to be able to bring their families over. What a wonderful country America was. We gave them hope. At JCPL, we provide the tools people need to support personal growth and create opportunities for civic, social, and cultural engagement. I believe that every day life offers us adventures and experiences and challenges, and that lifelong learning is essential. Let the adventure begin. With our Culture Pass program, you get free passes to great local attractions like Dinosaur Ridge and more. Teenagers enjoy book discussion groups and summer reading clubs. Sitting in that bar was the beginning of my education as a storyteller. Adults look forward to the Distinguished Author series. I like mysteries, I like adventure. Sharon Eckler has been on many adventures in her lifetime, but now she relies on books. Thankfully, they come to her at her assisted living center. Many of the people here uh, and in other facilities like this don't have the opportunity to, to get to a library. We look forward to going down and for the bookmobile to come here on the first and third Thursday of every month. We have about 82 stops a month where we see about 600 people, probably about 650 people a month. It's an important lifeline for them. These are people who for the most part, we'd not be able to get library service any other way. When you can't see very good, the books that are on tape or on disc are really nice. But this really, to me, is what library service is all about. It's very personalized, it's very individual. For those of us that don't have cars or anything of that nature, this bookmobile is just a ticket. Dogs on the bed. From little ones. Okay. We'll see you now. To seniors, JCPL helps you live the life you want to live. 
I'd be really lost without it, and I hope we don't ever lose it. I am always amazed when kids come in, or parents come in with their kids and say, she got her library card at three months old, and I met a gentleman who was 90 years old, and he said, I've had a card for 47 years, and I still use it. Whatever your dream is, no matter how fanciful or whatever, we can help you to get there. There's always something new every time you come in. Libraries are a place where everyone's welcome. It's a way of feeling like you're part of the community. Libraries have a long history with a promise that says we're going to work hard to make sure you get what you need. This is a library system that cares deeply about the community and it shows. Well, that's part of the magic that happens around here every day. Now we're here at the Anythink Library in Thornton with Pam Sandley and Smith. Thanks for having us. Thanks, Wendy. We love showing our libraries to people. As we said earlier, these libraries were the worst in the state. Now they've gone to some of the best in the country. How did you do it? We had courage to examine really what a library should be for the 21st century. And we took um, some big risks. But most importantly, we thought about how does it feel to be a customer in a library and how can we make that work? So what is different about these libraries? Everything, I guess. What's different in the libraries is we really looked at the way bookstores work. So when you come in the library, it feels very comfortable. We have these beautiful wood shelves. We organize our books in a way that's very easy to find. We abandoned Dewey and now we have WordThink. So you just look things up like cooking and then you find the cookbook that you're looking for. It's alphabetical. Our staff are really friendly. We hire staff who love working with people. We're working on the hospitality model, which is how do people feel when they come into the library? We want them to feel welcome. They, we want them to feel comfortable. We want them to feel smart. As you walk in, you have a cafe grab something to drink, something to eat, bring it into the library, maybe sit by the fire. That's part of the hospitality. We think that people love to sit down and read or do their homework, having a cup of coffee or a cupcake or a cookie, and that makes them feel like they're more at home. And, and so, also, we get really hungry too, and we love <laughs> having fresh fruit and wonderful sandwiches. What does anything mean? Anything is anything that you want the library to be. So it's a new way of looking at libraries. Um, when you walk in the door, anything is your library. So whatever it is that you want or need in the library, it you get to like decide what it is. You might want a quiet space to study. You might want a space to bring your kids to story time. You might want a space where you want to learn more about computing. So anything is your library. We give it to you. Tell me more about the sustainability aspect. From the very beginning, our board of directors set a standard that they wanted our libraries to be LEED certified silver. And all of our new libraries are actually coming in at gold, which is superb because we know how important it is. You only get to build public buildings one time and we try to do it um, right and we try to build our libraries so that we'll be able to afford to run them in the future as our energy costs increase. So the design, the architecture, the structure of the buildings? Everything in the building really that we could thoughtfully afford. We bring in daylight um, into the center of the building. We have um, in some of our libraries geothermal. We have solar um, photovoltaic panels. Um, we have all of our materials as much as we can possibly um, manage are recycled. So. The building is very natural and it breathes and it's a wonderful, comfortable building and it sustains itself. Tell me about this national award. The national, the IMLS National Medal. Yes. We were awarded the National Medal at the White House in December. Each year, five libraries and five museums are awarded the National Medal. The reason we won the award was our efforts towards innovating our libraries and connecting with our community. In your job interview for director of the library system, you said, if you don't want to shoot for the moon, don't hire me. Does that sound right? I did say that, and it was a very brave thing to say at the very end of an interview, but um, it was something that I felt strongly. And 
That is, you only get a chance once in an organization to do something like rebuild a library system. And both personally and organizationally, I think you need to set your standards you know, very high and you want to do something as well as you possibly can. So we challenged ourselves to build not just a regular library or public building, but the best we could possibly imagine. You have certainly taken this library to new heights. Congratulations. Thanks, Wendy. We're going to talk to some of the other Anything staff members later in the show, but for now, thanks for being with us, Pam. Thanks. And now let's check out a Littleton library where children are getting help with their reading from an unlikely source. It starts out that sometimes kids, when they're in school or even with their parents, they don't want to read to a person or adult because they're afraid they'll make errors or they can't really read correctly. But when they're with an animal, they, the animals don't care and they love to listen. So this kind of helps them to gain a little confidence and then they get to, you know, to see the animals as well. We're here generally from 10 to 12 and uh, it's just turned out to be a, a very fine program. We get a lot of interest and the kids are so much fun and the dogs love it. At least I think Sadie does. <laughs> and the main emphasis on uh, becoming certified is to be able to, for them to remain calm in all situations. And uh, so he, he enjoys it, and I probably wouldn't do it if he didn't care for it. And you can, you can tell. So I learned about Denver Pet Partners, and we went through the training, and Lance was the very first guinea pig that they had in Denver Pet Partners. And we thought maybe we would visit in nursing homes, but they had this chance for the read program, and they said it would be good because sometimes younger children might prefer to read to a little guinea pig. He comes all shabby and dirty. His white coat gone gray and stringy as the smelliest of mops. Some of the kids that come in and talk to me are uh, uh, not really familiar with uh, the uh, dogs in many cases and uh, in particular bloodhounds because uh, there are not that many around Colorado so it, it gives me the opportunity to talk to them about bloodhounds, what they do. And the children are great because you will see progression. Sometimes the kids can't even uh, put the words, sound out the words, and then in a few months it's almost a miracle because they can start to read full words, sentences. It's just incredible to see. It's really, really fun. And I find that um, you know, a lot of the kids are good readers and it's, it just is very evident. And, uh, the fact that their parents tend to look for these opportunities and take advantage of them is very important. I think uh, they get a couple things. One is I think they get an opportunity to, to read, which we'd like them to do more of. And second of all, I think it gives them something to look forward to. It gives them an opportunity to come out and say, I'm going to actually read to an animal. It's uh, a little bit different than, say, reading to themselves or reading to a parent. The Denver Pet Partners is a wonderful opportunity for you to bring an animal, dog, cat. We even have a little horse that can visit with People. It goes to nursing homes, we go to schools, we go to the read programs. Uh, I've been retired for almost 10 years and I've had more personal satisfaction and, and fun doing this job than I ever had in my life before. So. We believe in supporting the Bemis programs. We've been coming and, and kids are enjoying swapping out books every time we come and we love pets. I am, I am amazed. We've come this week to two different programs. We did the juggling and the children's story time and there's just boundless opportunities for these kids. And I think this is a, uh, a real nice uh, gem, the library is. It's really just a hidden gem and once people discover it, I think there's so much more here that uh, people can find, whether it's for adults or for kids, uh, so, uh, you know, keep reading. Joining me now from Denver Public Library is Jen Morris. Thanks for coming up here to be with us. Thank you for having me. You recently opened a brand new state-of-the-art branch. Tell me about this. Yes, we just recently opened the Green Valley Ranch branch library of the Denver Public Libraries, and it is absolutely gorgeous. It was uh, funded through the Better Denver Bond, and it's 26,000 square feet, over 100,000 items from books, DVDs, e-books, audiobooks, magazines, you name it, we got it. You have more than 500 computers available to the public. 
job services training. Tell me about what's available to the average citizen. Yes, throughout the system we do have over 500 computers and we will be adding about 250 more in the next year. If people don't know how to search for jobs online, write a resume, print a resume, we will give one-on-one -on -one support to them. We also do something called BizBoost. So if you want to open a business and you don't know how, you can come and talk to us one-on-one -on -one and learn how to do that. And it's free. It's all free. Everything's free. And uh, we have, right now we have 24 locations, the Central Library, and now 23 branches. Jen, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. We've heard about how libraries can help educate our children and how they can help the economy, but they can also strengthen a community. Rather than complain, one determined citizen from Lakewood used her local library to solve a very noisy problem. Meet Lakewood Library patron, Sue McMahon. When the speed limit on Highway 6 in Lakewood increased back in 2001, the traffic noise in Sue's backyard more than doubled. I was outraged. It got to the point we couldn't have a conversation at all. She couldn't enjoy the garden she'd spent 30 years creating. Her noise problem needed a solution, a sound wall to buffer her home from the highway. And she needed information. I had to have my ducks in a row, they had to quack in unison and on command. I had to be very sure of what I was doing. To get her ducks in a row, to pitch her idea, she had to have government data. A lot of it. I had to be able to speak their language. I had to know what the rules and regulations were for decibel levels, for speed limits, for sound barriers. Before any loading, drilling, or digging could ever take place, Sue had to do some digging of her own at the Jefferson County Public Library in Lakewood. Okay, transportation. I really didn't know where to look for some of this stuff. But librarian Sharon Partridge knew exactly where to look. It looks like the Department of Labor did something about noise. With 25 years experience, Sharon works the reference desk, specializing in government documents. She specifically said she wanted things on the health consequences of noise. She was passionate from day one to be sure that if there was anything I needed, I just needed to ask. State law, research studies, community contacts. Oh, great. Stuff you just can't Google. When I hit a roadblock, I'd come back to share, and now I need this. She pulled it out of her magic hat, and there it was. It's like being a detective. You find out what they have, and you work from there. The detective work paid off. Sue got her ducks in a row and discovered that grant money could be used to pay for a sound wall made out of recycled tires. In 2006, state lawmakers approved the funding. When she got the uh, tire company interested. She was so excited. More than 4,000 tires would be used to make three different types of sound walls, a test project that could ultimately benefit cities nationwide. All of this was never about my backyard. It was about finding a solution to the problem of noise. In the spring of 2010, the sound wall was complete. It was nine years after Sue first went to the Lakewood Public Library to ask for help. They were my lifeline. When I got stuck, uh, I had some place to go and figure out how, how to proceed, what to do next. Lawmakers, engineers, state workers, local business owners, and Sharon the librarian all played a role. This whole project has been people pulling together and giving their all and trying to solve a problem. Sue and her team received a Sustainability Award from the City of Lakewood for making a positive change. Sue's an example of how one person can build the village that changes their small part of the world. And that's, that's exactly what she did with this sound wall project along 6th Avenue. Lakewood Mayor Bob Murphy says Jefferson County Public Libraries support democracy, provide a place for civic involvement, and countless resources for its citizens. So many people depend upon our libraries for their reading, for their computer research. Think about how many people are computer literate, yet not all of them can afford to have computers in their homes. The information and services available are staggering. More than 80 databases on everything from car repair to learning a language, stuff that would cost you thousands of dollars to access on your own. 
and you get trained staff to help you find what you need. All you have to do is just hop online 24-7 with your library card and you have access to all this great information. It's not just a library, it's the network of libraries and that network is making libraries stronger all the time. Every day, Jefferson County Public Library helps ordinary citizens accomplish extraordinary things. Sue can stop and smell the flowers again. She not only helped build a sound wall, but I do want to give you a hug for all your help. She also helped build a stronger community. We're back at the Anythink Library in Thornton with Stacy Ledden and Rachel Fuel. I understand you are the person responsible for throwing out the Dewey Decimal System. Why? Well, we did it for several reasons. Um, a traditional library is organized in with the Dewey Decimal System using a numeric system from 000 to 999. We were making a lot of changes in our libraries and for various reasons we decided to change it. One of those was to reflect people's natural language as they come in to ask for things. We wanted to reflect that natural language back to them. We wanted to have a flexible system so we could move things. We didn't have to keep that in that linear pattern that Dewey was. We can move things around if we feel like it or if our community develops an interest in a certain area. We've also changed it so that we can merchandise our materials better. Um, we've moved to a different kind of collection model where we collect primarily popular browsing materials. So how is everything categorized now? We use the structure that a bookstore uses. It's called BISAC, and it stands for Book Industry Standards and Communication. But we've developed a little bit different system for it so that it meets the needs of our customers. So all of our materials are labeled. They can still use our library catalog to find things, and then they're on the shelf in a title alphabetical order. How are people reacting to the change? They are pleasantly surprised, and many people who come in thinking that they're gonna have a hard time finding things have really been proven completely wrong, and it's really easy for customers to use and browse for those kinds of materials that they came in here and find some things maybe that they didn't even think they would find. All right, well, let's ask Stacy about this new logo. Tell me about this. Well, as we were changing our service philosophy and really reinventing library service for the people of Adams County, we needed a brand that reflected that. And part of that is the doodle that's part of our logo. Um, and you can see it right here on my pin. Uh, we wanted something that was playful, but that anybody could relate to. No matter if you're an adult or a child, you can relate to it and it's something that you've done along the way. Something exciting coming up, this treehouse concept. Tell me about that. Well, we really emphasize play here at the library. Uh, we're a place of creativity, a place where you can find ideas, and playfulness uh, has been represented by this idea of tree houses in our libraries. So at our Anything Huron Street location, there are large tree sculptures that you can see there, and each one symbolizes a different experience. So we'll also have a tree grove in the children's area here at Wright Farms as well. Stacy, it seems like you and Rachel and the staff here, you really try to make it fun and creative. It feels that way. Thanks for having us. Now let's take a look at what's coming up around the community. As you can see, we've come a long way. These aren't your father's libraries. We hope you've enjoyed learning more about them and we hope you'll take the time to visit your local library to take advantage of the great programs and services. I'm Wendy Brockman with Metro Voices. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.
In Adams County, an amazing transformation. The worst library system in the state to one of the best in the country. In Jefferson County, libraries that are changing lives. And in Littleton, a program to help kids as they read to dogs. We'll take a look at the great innovations happening in libraries around our area on Metro Voices, Thursdays at 8.